Imagine a small town after a big snowstorm. The town has roads, each of which connects one house to another house, but the roads have been rendered unusable due to the snow. Some of the townspeople have volunteered to try to clear snow off the streets. Of course, they'd love to clear all the streets. But this is a small town, and there aren't a lot of volunteers. And every street requires a different number of volunteers to clear it. The short, narrow streets without a lot of snow might require fewer volunteers, while the longer, wider, winding roads with lots of snow might require more. The town needs to clear enough roads such that there is some way to get from every house in the town to every other house. The question, though, is how to do this using the fewest number of volunteers possible. This is an algorithmic question, and it's the one whose solution we're going to be exploring here. One initial question you might ask is this, how many roads are we going to need to clear? Well, if we needed to connect two houses, we know we'd need exactly one road to connect them. So if we add a third house, we're going to need a second road. One more house, one more road. And with each additional house we add, we're going to need one more road to keep the town connected. So in a town with n houses, we're going to need to clear n minus 1 roads to connect all houses in the town. And that's a useful insight. We're looking to connect all of the houses, and we can do so by choosing n minus 1 roads to clear. The question now is figuring out which n minus 1 roads. So where do we start? Well, an intuitive thing to do might be to start with the road that requires the fewest volunteers to clear it. After all, if we're looking for a network of roads that collectively requires the fewest volunteers, starting with the easiest road to clear feels like a reasonable thing to do. For any road, we'll call the number of volunteers needed to clear that road the weight of that road. So here, we're going to start with the road with the smallest weight. So, alright, we've cleared one road. Now, what do we do next? Well, by the same logic, we can try adding the road with the next smallest weight, and then do the same thing again. But eventually, if we keep going through the roads in order by the number of volunteers needed to clear it, we'll likely come across a road that connects two houses that already have a path to each other. And here's a key point. If we come across a road that connects two houses that are already connected via some other path, then we definitely shouldn't bother clearing that road. There's no need to, since you can already get from one endpoint of the road to the other. Remember, we don't care how long it takes to get from one house to another. We just care that there is a way to get from every house to every other house. So it's only valuable to clear a road if it's going to create some new connection between two previously disconnected parts of the town. And that means, if we come across roads in our algorithm that don't create new connections, Let's just skip them and move on. If we keep repeating this process, take the next easiest road to clear, see if it will create a new connection, and add it to our growing network of roads if it does, then once we've added n minus 1 roads, we'll have connected the whole town. But is this the way to choose roads that uses the fewest volunteers? In other words, is it optimal? Or is there some other way we could have chosen roads instead so that the resulting network of roads would have required fewer people? And it's not immediately obvious. Our early choices, the easiest road, the next easiest road, didn't take into consideration what later roads would look like. And maybe our early choices of roads might have cornered us into some less optimal roads later, since we could only add a new road if it connected to previously disconnected parts of the town. The question is whether the locally optimal choices we made at each step in this algorithm, picking the lightest road that created a new connection in the town, resulted in a globally optimal solution. And quite often in algorithms, this does not work. In general, making locally optimal choices in an algorithm does not guarantee a globally optimal solution. But it turns out that in this particular case, with this particular algorithm, the so-called greedy algorithm works. This algorithm, known as Kruskal's algorithm, identifies the optimal way to choose roads. So now the question is why? Why does this algorithm work? And often when analyzing an algorithm, 
it's helpful to look at what happens at each step in that algorithm. And here, we repeat the same step again and again. We find the lightest weight road, and if it forms a new connection between parts of the town, we clear it. What we'd like to do is prove that this step is correct, that when we clear the first road this way, that first road is part of the optimal solution, and the same for the second road. And in general, that if we start with some set of roads that are part of the optimal solution, and we clear a new road using this algorithm, what we get is still part of the optimal solution. If that step is correct, then by induction, our whole algorithm must be correct. With every road we clear, we still end up with part of the optimal solution until we clear the last road and end up with a whole solution. So let's try to prove that each step is correct. We start with some set of roads, and let's assume that these roads are correct so far. They're part of the optimal solution. What we'd like to show is that the next road we clear is still correct. When we clear a new road, and let's call that road R, remember that we only do so if R connects to previously unconnected parts of the town. So to introduce some new terminology, the road R is crossing a cut of the town, where a cut is a separation of the town into two different groups of houses where no road previously crossed between those two groups. And not only does this road R cross the cut of this town, it's also the easiest to clear road out of any road that does cross the cut. How do we know that? Well, if there were a road that were easier to clear, then we would have cleared it already, because we clear roads in increasing order of weight. And at some point, we do need to clear a road that crosses this cut. So if we haven't yet crossed the cut, by the time we get to this road R, then there must not be any lighter weight road that does cross the cut. So how do we know that when we clear the road R, that we're still on track to the optimal solution? A common strategy for proving things like this is imagining what would happen if we were wrong. So let's consider what things might look like if we weren't on the right track if there were some other optimal network of roads that didn't include R. Well, if we took that network and added R to it, then R would be connecting two houses that are already connected by some other path. In other words, we've created a cycle in this town. This cycle crosses the cut once with R, and then, because it needs to cycle back to itself, it must cross the cut a second time to get back. So let's take that other road that crosses the cut and remove it for now and see what we're left with. Notice that the town is still connected. And notice that there's no way for this new choice of roads to require more volunteers to clear than the so-called optimal version. R was the easiest to clear road out of any of the roads that crossed the cut. So replacing the other road with R can only make the roads easier to clear. And so the network of roads we have here must be just as efficient, if not more efficient to clear than the so-called optimal version. And that's the proof. So long as we're always adding the lightest weight road that crosses a cut of the town, we're always going to be on track to the optimal choice of roads. And though we've been talking about towns and roads and houses, this algorithmic problem is a lot more general. To put some formal terms to it, if we represent the town as a graph, every house represents a node or vertex, with an edge connecting two vertices if there's a road that connects the corresponding houses. Every edge, too, has a weight, in this case a number, representing how many volunteers it will take to clear the snow off that road. What we've been looking for in Kruskal's algorithm is called a minimum spanning tree. A spanning tree of a graph is some subset of the edges in that graph that still touches all of the vertices, but using as few edges as possible. And the minimum spanning tree is the spanning tree where the sum of all of the weights of the edges is as small as possible. And it turns out that this type of problem shows up in a lot of places, whether it's clearing out snow in a small town after a snowstorm, or connecting a network of computers, such that every computer can communicate with every other, or wiring up electricity across all the rooms in a house. This algorithm relied on a property of minimum spanning trees known as the cut property. 
the property that when we take a subset of a minimum spanning tree and add to it the lightest edge that crosses some cut of that minimum spanning tree, we still end up with a subset of a minimum spanning tree. And using the cut property, we can prove that as we go through this algorithm, step by step, it's correct from start to finish. So the lesson here is that we didn't solve this big problem all at once. We solved it step by step, one road at a time, making the best choice available to us at every step, and not really worrying about future decisions until we got there. And while this algorithm doesn't always work, this style of algorithm at least, it's a good strategy to try. Because even if it doesn't work in every type of algorithmic problem, sometimes this type of approach will get you close to the right answer, and there's lessons to be learned there as well. But if, as in the case of this particular problem, you can prove that every individual step is correct, that might help you prove that the bigger picture is correct too.